Turn your speakers up. Hey, man. This is Chicago 77.3. Right now. All right. Get in tune. It's the one and only DJ Malone, man. How you guys doing? Chicago 77.3. The best place to be at on any day, really, man. Now, I, you guys know, man, I've been out here this summer just, you know, ripping and running, getting, getting it back to things, man. As they, as people are saying right now, we are outside. And, uh, I don't like that. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think everybody needs to stay in the house, but hey, I'm more of a hermit myself. I'm kind of an in, uh, introvert in a, in a sense. So, you know, it is what it is, man. But I'm still bringing you guys, the people who are just cool to talk to, got got a good story to tell, and things that, that you guys need to be put on, man. So this next person that I got, and we were just talking a little bit off the, off the air real quick, he's actually from Chicago. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, I, 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 he, and, and, and not just from the city, but actually in the area over east where where I used to live at. So um, let's go ahead and bring him in. Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. What's going on? What's going on? I first and foremost want to say thanks to Chicago's native son over in Houston. Uh, let me come on and talk about what we got going on back here home. Uh, Marcus Carter, uh, owner of a company called The Black Rope Builder, and I do want to spend some time telling you exactly what that is. So, again, appreciate the opportunity. Oh, man, I appreciate you being here, man. I, I, I do, man. So I, wa- I wanted to get my listeners to get to know you and, and what you got going on and everything, man. So um, let's go into a time machine re- real quick. Where did this all start for you? Give us the basic 411 about you. Primarily what I do is I help people grow wealth, wealth management through real estate. So I've done, done this enough time to know that like go over a lot of people here. So I give people uh, an example, like a, a client that was one of my first six, seven years ago. So she comes up to me and says, I hate my job. I want to get into real estate. I was watching Fix and Flip last night. I see people making a lot of money. I signed up for one of them seminars, spent thousands of dollars, but I really want to get into this, but I haven't made any headway. We sat down and we created a plan for her with real estate to, like, use it to leverage wealth. So without having any experience, uh, without having any contractors or anything like that, she embarked on a fix and flip. Now, I helped her do everything from the standpoint that she didn't even have to come out of pocket. It was just her name, her Mm -hmm. credit, and we went to war. When we got her a personal loan, and then when we got her what's called a hard money loan in the real estate world, that people use to go in and do fix and flip and when they want to get a loan from a bank. Now, what people don't know, but uh, I think people got a breast of last year with all that PPP stuff, is that every time you go and take out a loan to fix and flip a property, you have to start an LLC. You know, what she didn't know once we finished that process is that, like, you know what, I think I want to keep this property. I didn't know that I could get some money out of it, put some tenants in there, and then just make money every single month. So she turned it out, changing her whole strategy and going to a buy and hold. Now, from there, where I kind of come in, that's normal real estate for me. That's my Clark Kent. Now, the Superman kind of comes when we start leveraging that initial asset. So saying, okay, since the property is in the name of an LLC, that's its own separate business. Uh, Every time your tenants pay you rent, put that in a separate business account. Every year we're going to go get this property reappraised, pull some money out of it, and we're going to use that to go buy another property. So really what I do and kind of the origin story is we take a person's individual situation and then we kind of legitimately go get funding, grow grow the business, and we take that person where they would like to go. You like the fact that you're you're bringing in – um, one, one that a lot of things that, uh, especially as a black community, we, we're not taught these things when they were, you know, growing up, you know what I'm saying? We're not taught about credit. We're not taught about, um, you know, financially setting yourself up, um, not just for you, but y- your loved ones and, and everything else like that. So I, I, I got to give kudos when kudos are due and everything, man. And I think, um, with the pandemic, I think that's, it's been a good thing because you have seen more businesses coming out of it now. People are starting to take more ownership now, and I like that. It's a tremendous time, and it's a tremendous opportunity, not not even specifically on the business side, but just being able to step out there and be yourself. 
like myself personally, like I've written four or five books, I've hosted a TV show, uh, put out music, done mixtapes, all these types of things. But the pandemic was an opportunity, you kind of see with the Black Wolf Building and how we found each other, like, okay, I can reintroduce myself as a more authentic whole person where, like, I couldn't do that a couple of years ago. And I, I think um, the business opportunity that you see it, I don't know how it is in Houston, but back here in Chicago, a lot of people of our, of our hue, they took advantage of a lot of these things that were out there for them. And the business was, for me was great because I think everybody kind of is in there like, hey, I think I can make something out of this. Or you know, we're going to get this type of head start or this type of um, jump off, like i.e. that but the PPP money and all the money that was floating around, people weren't just out spending. I got a lot of calls. Like, hey, I want to do something yeah. with it. So it was really just starting to me. I, 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 and, and I think also, too, man, is that, um, and, and I know we bring up the pandemic a lot, but a lot of people got to see that now. A lot of people are being more hip to the LLCs, the tax brackets, you know, different stuff, educating themselves in their own uh, city and stuff. And, and, you know, being, you know, being from Chicago and understanding Chicago is like, and, and here's the thing what I learned is for me, my my standpoint is Chicago is one of those markets where it can make you or break you. You get what I'm saying? Because it's it's it's, it's an established city and and everything. Versus to maybe Houston. Houston is I think is going to be on on New York rise. I really think Houston is going to be the next Atlanta because there's so many people are moving here and and with real estate and different businesses and, and stuff. So what's your thoughts on, on the different climate? Really, you kind of read my mind because the next final review you're going to give me, I wanted to take it there. The other opportunity that's happening and tell me what my company offers is the automation of growing your business. So being set up in Chicago, I'm like chomping at the bit to get to Houston, to get to Atlanta, to get to Charlotte. These other markets were like, all right, since the business is already set up and it's set up in a way that allows you to travel with it, like you can buy and sell real estate in Houston and Atlanta. These are emerging markets. Um, so that's really, really important to know. And more or less what I'm talking about is like what a person does next. So the person came up, you got your PPP money, you you know you need to get into something, but a person is not paying attention to the fact that, hey, to get all that together, you pretty much checked off every box you would need to be able to continue to get funding for that business. Outside of the DP, you got the LLC together, you got your business bank account, they got all your transactions itemized. You you have your EIN number, you have all of this stuff, and you have a business in place. You're like, don't stop right there. You keep going. And like, the the light bulb moment that most people have when they're like, okay, I think I made a huge step and then I couldn't talk with them for 10 minutes and they were like, their, their mind is blown. They're like, I can take that and we you can start that real estate portfolio, start that business, uh, start planning for the kids' college, start getting LLCs in the kids' names, and this was in a 10-minute conversation. So the excitement and the opportunity from what happened with that pandemic, I, God bless Everybody can look through a tough time, but it's also a tremendous time for growth, and it's crazy out there right now. And and you know, and I, I like I like how you're talking, man, because a lot of people. Um, and these these are things that people need to know. And, and 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 me starting my own business, like you know, starting the DJing business, starting I have my own radio station, and, and starting these 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 entities. Um, what I realize is one of the key components is organization, and and just organizing from getting it like for instance making sure that you're you, you keep all the receipts whatever you do for business you got to make sure that you keep those receipts um for later on for taxes and stuff and it's it's those little things that go a long way so uh, how big is organization in in with all this it's huge it's huge and, and even with yourself i give you and your listeners uh, a tip so somebody like yourself to have these multiple streams of revenue that you have, DJ, uh, host, just being a personality in and of itself, that's an LLC for each one. 
So you go start a business account for each one. Let's say you get a check for $5,000. You get that as a, a, an appearance fee. And you put that in your uh, celebrity business bank account. You can take that money, put that in your DJ account, put that in whatever account you would like to, and each one of those accounts now has revenue for that time period showing $5,000. You give me three bank statements just doing that. Now, mind you, we're not talking about fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. We're just talking about that initial five, but being able to creatively leverage it. You give me three bank statements with that. I'll turn that into a business for out of credit. Well, like, okay, now you're putting another twenty thousand dollars into the DJ business. How much more can it make that? And you're able to do that for each LLC. And these are little things. It's like, all right, the well, organization is perfect. And that's usually step number one, in addition to overall mindset. The next step is how to leverage it, what to do. That's dope, man. I, I, like, I like this conversation, man. I, I really do. We're going to get into the book in just one, one more question. I want, I, could, somebody had, had wanted to know about this and asked me because I was telling people I was going to, you know, get to talk to you, and I was reading the book, and, you know, I was reading your bio and stuff, and I'm like, okay, well, this is a perfect opportunity um, because there's some people who are up-and-coming and and I guess this this is this is my my last question before we get into the book. But when when is that point when you say okay, I as a as like a maybe a, a business owner. When when do you realize the point of I get an LLC or am I am I at that level yet? How can you tell that? Because some people are coming on the horizon. And they're making money, but are they making enough money for the LLC, or should you just go ahead and get that anyway? With this question and pretty much every question you will ask me, my response is typically going to be information should rule the day. So I get that question all the time. Hey, should I quit my job? I want to quit my job. When is the point to kind of go full board? And a lot of that goes into the services that we offer. It's, it's never a bad time. I would tell anybody, if you, like in the state of Illinois, it costs $155 to go get an LLC. If you can, just start one every month. And, like, find out what to do with it later. Because it's something that, okay, the age on it does matter. So I tell people, hey, if you, or I build it into a client's plan, we're like, hey, we're going to quarterly just go get a new LLC. Now, typically in real estate, that comes from the fact that you get a new property, you have to attach it to an LLC to borrow against it. So I have to do it, but it, it kind of picked up over time. And it's like, it's never a bad time to go get one. Now, the, the real nuts and bolts of it, what you probably was asking me in the undertones is, and from a money aspect, when is it cool? When, I, when am I at a point where I'm making enough where I can consider this this? That is where the person needs to just treat it like a business. Well, like, okay, if you make $70,000 a year and you actually organize your business, going back to the last question, it's like, hey, my business is making $4,000 a month, which is $48,000 a year, and at that point in time, you're making an informed decision. Hey, I lead a lifestyle that's accustomed to $70,000 a year. If I go full board into my business, that's only forty eight. So then you ask yourself the question, I'm making $48,000 a year, but I'm kind of doing that part-time because I have another job that I work 40 to 50 hours a week where I'm making 70000 So I'm never one to, like, jump in somebody's life and say, you should be doing this or you're not really about this life because you didn't quit your job. But I, said, I tell people to make informed decisions. You know your quality of life. You know what you used to. You know you should know what your LLC, your side business is making. You should know how long it takes you to make that, and you above all should know can you live on that or when it should be time. But I think it should be a, a informed decision. With that said, I'm not just saying it's all random. With that said, I'll say a lot of this stuff. Like I got a, I got a line. I say at a certain point in time, the student learns to never follow the teacher. It's always that fork in the road moment where, hey, I can take this chance, I can take this risk. It could get me there much, much faster, or I could continue one percent a day getting better, getting better. I never, right. I tell the person to take calculated risks, and I think that's where the information comes because it's always going to come to a point where are you ready to jump out of the plane, and you have to trust that you can fly. 
Yeah. That's more of an indictment on that individual, though. Like, when you look in the mirror, do you think you can handle how life's going to continue to throw these punches? And that part isn't just money. And I think that's why uh, with a lot of my clients, I'm real cross T's dot eyes when it comes to the dollars and cents of it, but a lot of it's mindset. Like, don't put yourself out there in a weird situation knowing that you'll freak out if you're wondering how you're going to pay your rent next month. Like, I don't tell people to right. gamble. I tell people to take calculated rents based on what they want to do. And it's also, it's also too, and, and, and me just, I always had a hustle mentality. That's just always been me. Um, I can make I can make, you know, slices into anything. And I'm always been the type of guy, well, hey, I can DJ, but I can also implement the models as well. I can also implement um, artists or however may, however may have you. I take the DJing and I turn it in different ways to where it, it helps me in my favor. And so that, that's one that I always, you know, give advice when people ask me about that is that if you – it's on you. You have to be that hustler's mentality, and self-discipline is a must in there. If you don't like that, that's the key thing. A lot of because a lot of times you're going to have to push yourself to do this. There's no boss telling you you're the boss, so you're going to have to go out there and make it make it happen. And just to follow that up real quick, I don't. Like, my background is in motivational speaking. Um, I do a lot of speaking, um, decision-making, things like that. My goal when I started my company was to make sure it was all dollars and cents. I didn't want to make people feel like it was church. Like, I don't want you to feel better when you get finished talking to me, but I want you to be able to say, okay, if I go to this website, this will help me figure that out. Like, some tangible stuff that's going on. But it, 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 it can't. It can't be misunderstood how important mindset is. Or like I, not just having the hustle mentality, but matching that with the business. Or like I, I don't just go make money on the weekends with my friends. Like I got an LLC in my account. I know how much money I spend on supplies, how much money I spend on time, how much money I, I spend in extra gas. Or like I can really tell myself, am I turning a profit or not? That should answer how much time you put into it or is it ready for you to take another step with it. And in addition to the hustle mentality, start looking at these side hustles. Stop calling them side hustles. They're businesses. Like how much is that business making? How much do you have to put into it to make that? How long does it take you to make that? And so many of us for so long have been, we, we hustlers. We find a way to make some money. And all I'm saying is, like, and they just write that stuff down. And that, that usually, for some people, that make them go one or two directions. To the right person, that just lets them know that I've been doing this all along. Marcus is just telling me to write it down now. Use my own data. Pay attention to my own experiences, how my clients respond to me, how my customers respond to me, how much they're willing to pay. Use that wealth of information that you gain while you're out there hustling all that is is a business plan. When you put it on paper, it's a cash flow statement. Once we start putting this stuff on paper, we start talking the language that the banks want to hear. It's money. The money is so easy right now. The mindset is hard. Getting people to understand, hey, man, keep up with all that stuff. Keep up because when you go get the money, I just need bank statements and a copy of your LLC. If you don't have that, I can't do anything, but it's that simple. To take that, okay, I make a couple hundred dollars uh, a week with this, to turn that into, okay, this bank will give me a $20,000 line of credit so I can put some money into that. And I can turn that a couple hundred dollars a week. So it can turn into a business. It can turn into these things. We just got to treat it like such from the get-go. And for the right people like yourself, it's just, um, it's just a slight detour to what you've already been doing. Yeah. And and with all this knowledge, you wrote the book, man. You wrote the, you wrote these books. So let's let let's talk about this, man. So um, the the uh, the book. Now the, tell me tell me the, the the title of it. Just just one more time. All right, the the Black Wealth Bible, and more or less, it's just a heavy heavy case study on everything that we're talking about. Um, yeah. Start out with the book, just giving a, a barometer, a sign of the times. Because why this book was necessary 
is that the wealth strategies that I share with my audience, and there's nothing new. I didn't create anything. But from a standpoint of how it's applied to black people in this country at this moment, being able to apply these age-old wealth strategies is a little bit different. Like, we're all taught to go read rich dad, poor dad, but that doesn't address the, you know, our young people like they shot by police officers. That doesn't address that um, our government seems to be on a witch hunt to make sure that we can't vote next time. So these wealth really? strategies, yeah, two plus two should equal four, but you need to account for this. So being able to set the table, because I don't think sometimes we understand the magnitude of what we're up against, the machine that's working against us as we collect this information and trying to get ourselves together. So I really want to accept my team, so to speak. So that's, a, that's one third of the book. The second third of the book is like, okay, now we don't expose all of that. Let's build something new. And that's when mm. we get the Black Wealth Commandments, where it's like, okay, if we start over, if we're going to create our own way, what are the key points? What are the foundations? What are the things that we're going to hold near and dear? And I put those out there. So it's like, all right, everything we do, the principles are going to be based on this. That's the second third of the book. And then the last third of the book is just simply like, okay, how do I put that to work? Because, again, I'm trying to get away from the motivational space and more of a tangent space. All right. So what I mm-hmm. talked to you about in the first two thirds of the book, all right, this is how you do it. Go to this website, do this, this is going to equal this, and then this is going to happen. When that comes, then you do this, that's going to equal this. While I'm really people, it's kind of like the third part of the book is basically a do-it-yourself. Yeah. Because I don't, okay. I don't, I won't say... I think the information is, is, is tantamount to a cure for cancer. When there's anybody, not, again, not saying that I created the information, but if I created a process that it could be easily disseminated by a large mass, I'm able to mass produce the information. That I will take credit for. It's like, hey, if, if I can help people with that, you don't like hold a medicine hostage. So everything that I present, hey, this is exactly what I'm trying to present. Now, most people, myself included, when you're making changes, it's good to do things in community. Like, I'm a military veteran. The people that I went to boot camp with 20 years ago, I can see you on the street tomorrow, and I'm going to look at you like my brother, because this is a hard time in life, and I remember everybody who was around me that was going through the same thing. Most of my clients don't mm-hmm. come to me because they feel like I'm an oracle. They come to me because I gave them the information already, and they would rather us do it together. Because I do have experience in helping other people and the questions that they might ask or feelings that might come up. That's dope, man. So, and with the with the book, how long did this take? Like how, like from from start to now? How like how? I could I know writing is is from I know it's it's a lot. So, like how did how did everything come about? How long did it take? This particular one, um, this particular one took all my life. And I got to, you know, I got to do the rap cliche, like I'm dropping a mixtape, just the realest thing I ever wrote. You know, I got I to gotta throw that in there. But it feels like that when you, when you're releasing a book, it's like releasing an album. You feel like it's a part of you. Um, and you have yeah. those, to, those certain moments where you feel like, hey, man, this one is the one that took my whole life to write. This is my reasonable doubt or my Illmatic from this the one I would want on my tombstone. My contribution to my community, the, the legacy, how I want to be remembered, the fight that we're fighting, when, it's, when it all goes down, what part did I play in it? Was I a plus or a minus? Like, I want this to be what I'm judged by, this book. So it's, it's important to me, and I feel like it, it took my That's whole very life. deep. Yeah, it, yeah, I didn't. It's an interpretation of experiences that we've all had. So it, it took the whole. It took my whole life. I had the, the combination of getting your heart broken, uh, investing in something, and having it fall apart. Um, walking in the store and, and having the guy follow me. Um, learning how to leverage real estate, or learning that wealth is a, a byproduct of time, not a byproduct of money. Like, all those interpretations of those things, and again, taking on the task of saying, hey, man, buddy is from Houston, this buddy is from L.A., this buddy is from Brooklyn, 
how can I put all this information I'm trying to put in, in a way where all of them can get it? And I want that responsibility. I want to hear all of those different places. I want these wealth strategies and the language that our community will understand. And the goal is to have everybody get it. So even with the Black Wealth Builder, the goal is to create a to create and fund a million black businesses by the year 2030. And like we own pace, we own pace. So it's an exciting time. It, and 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 I, I talked and like I talked I was talking to my guy about this the other day about the enterprise and how um, you know how like a lot of Chinese and and Mexicans they do this and Indians too um, they build up an enterprise um, so you see the, the the uncle owns this store down the block down two blocks over the auntie owns that up the street the 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 mom owns that the the, the dad owns this and they all share with that within each other and i think a lot of times it, it, it's sad but i it has to be i have to be real with it we especially a lot of black people we don't think like that we have a, a, a crabs in the bell type of mentality versus we don't we don't even need to have that. You know what I'm saying? Because I, and I honestly feel like we are the, the vehicle for a lot of things like hip hop. Hip hop has took over tremendously, like in every form from commercials, from this to that. About 25 years ago, this would even be a conversation. But look how much hip hop or the origins of hip hop have taken over. To, I'm with you 100%. I don't think we look at what you just said hard enough. Now, earlier in the interview, I told you, like, and I don't think we understand the magnitude of the fight that we're in and the machine that we're against. Because everything you just said was true. But what if you look at it this way? You just said that there are example after example after example if we just open our eyes and just to say, hey man, look how the Chinese do it. Look how, look how Jewish people do it. Look how pretty much every other culture, when you look at them in the midst that they created in this country, like there's an example of what we could do. At the same time, with it right in our face, we still like distracted, figuring out what the plan should be. Should we go back to Africa? Should we fight? Should we riot? Should we try to elect our own president? Should we work with them? Should we create our own thing? We just fumbling around and ain't really started doing anything. We just figuring out what we would like to do. And we pretending like there's not a blueprint all over the place. Other cultures, and then even look no further than our own country. Like, we were the America was started by the castoffs. They kind of came from England and they created their own thing because they didn't like how they were being ruled. And they started a revolution. So we really don't have to look any further than the people that brought us here or like what a plan could be to figure this out. Now if you want to take it further, like what you just said, hey man, open your door and walk. We keep getting mad at the Arab that owns the liquor store on our corner, but we're not paying attention to what he's doing. And we're sitting there pretending like we don't have any clue on what to do. And it's like, hey man, it's an example right there. It's an example right there. So what we're up to, I don't blame us anymore. There's something at play that made that happen because when you bring up what you bring up after that, when you say, hey, we're, the, we're a couple trillion dollar industry just as a people, so we're valuable, but we need to look how we're being leveraged. We're being mm -hmm. uh, more so mined. We're being created. We're being instructed and educated on how to continue being a consumer to a point where like, the conversation me and you have and would be considered motivational speaking, even though it's just real talk. Hey, if I'm in a situation I don't like, what are some things that I can do? And first and foremost, what am I up against? Yeah. We, it's, it's psychological warfare that's happening and we keep trying to go punch somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right, you're right. And again, I don't claim... You know, you know the deal with these people out here that claim to have all the answers. And I don't claim to have that. I don't need people to think what I think, but I'm going to make sure that every room I walk in, I inspire this conversation. Whether mm. like, hey, look, 
this is what's really going on. What's your response to that? Because we get pissed when we see something happen to one of our people, but we haven't. I think we'll get even madder when we start unwrapping the onion and we found out just how deep the rabbit hole went and what went into making sure we were in this position. Now, mind you, I think when we get out of it, we won't have time to look back like that, but I don't think none of this stuff is a coincidence. That it's a, a struggle to explain to somebody how important it is to own a home. Well, somebody did that to us. And then, and, 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 and I think pair, like a pair, you will prioritize a pair of Jordans or a vacation over, you know, buying a life insurance policy to make sure that the kids don't start behind the eight ball. Give them something to go. Because that's, that's all your fears. That's all your fears. And start kid out with a hundred dollars. Then that kid start next kid out with two hundred dollars. And you look up in ten generations, baby at eighteen got a million dollar trust fund. Not, not, not graduating from college, a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Like starting with yeah. a home that dad put the down payment on. So you started with property and no debt, and you're 21 years old. Versus most of us at 21 might have a kid, probably got a record, probably done already destroyed our credit. But it's like, and we up against a machine, and the only thing we can kind of, uh, kind of use as a resource right now is information, and that's the one thing that there is a lot of. Man, yeah. hey, man, look what the Chinese did. Look what they did. Look what they did. Or look how America just got started. You just pick up a history book and they'll tell us things we could do. Well, yeah, man. I think also, too, man, and, and, and I might be crazy at saying this because I think a lot of times I'll be looking back at stuff like that. I think we need to start getting, uh, especially the kids, we need to start working with our hands, and especially the guys, even the girls, but especially, uh, I, I always was taught, like, you know, when I was younger, I was I was in Woodstock class. I was, you know, DJing, you know, like sound engineering, if, 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 if that's the case. But I think a lot of times we're losing that art of um, working with your hands and having a craft and knowing a, a life skill. Versus to, oh, yeah, I can get on social media and be a, you know, social media consultant, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want things that people people can never take away from you. And, and to be honest with you, bro, you, I did my little background before, you know, I reached out next for the opportunity to be on your show. And you would be like the poster child. Like, I do a lot of speaking. I'd be like, okay, hey, here's the example. I don't know the exact origin but like it's something that you like to do so you picked out okay i love being around music or um, I, I love to make it or love to see it being made and you went and found a way multiple revenue streams to get paid for something that you like to do that's wealth right that's what wealth is so you 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 spend your day doing what you would like to do and you get paid for it if you need to make a little bit more money, you know how to tweak your business and maybe um, I'll run a special on the DJ or maybe I'm going to take a celebrity party. Like, you know exactly what to do. You're doing it on your terms in the areas that you want to do it in. And that's really what this thing is all about. And that's something that we're not taught. Like, it's not about like going to class and picking a subject and then saying, I'm going to make money at that. But no, what do you like to do? And let me show you how to earn a living at that. And it's basically what you're saying. Not even just your hands, but something that you know how to do. I call it minimum input, maximum output. What do you do that you could do in five minutes that it would take somebody two hours to do? Somebody mm. will pay you for that. And you should leverage that. You have a skill set. And we all have individual ones. And with the internet, what's interesting is, hey, you can start a business in Chicago and nobody in Chicago get it, but it'd be some small town in China that just your whole bottom line. Because you, got, really? you let people know that you can solve a particular problem and nothing is off limits now. There's no barriers to entry. You don't even have to leave your house now. You sell everything online. Yeah. There's really, exactly. what that equates to, no excuses no more. No excuses. We... And again, I want to, again, the book is important to me because, like, I want this conversation now. I want people uncomfortable, like, hey, did I do enough? Am I doing right. enough? 
am I properly utilizing it? Could we be doing more? And also to celebrate the fact that like everybody don't need to be warriors. There need to be 50 people in the back that's doing our financial analytics, as well as the 50 mm-hmm. warriors on the front line that's doing that, as well as the 50 women that are that are nurturing our community. Like it's going, it's not going to take. It's not going to be a fight when we go going through. We need to start a community. It's got to be a hospital, a grocery store, a school, you know, like, you know, and a bank. It don't need to be, okay, we got the toughest people. And um, we're gearing up for that. And I want my place. I want to be right in the mix of this whole thing. That's where it got me. So is the book right now, it's, it's out right now? No, no, no. Um, we release them at the end of next month, right? What you're seeing right now is, um, you let me ramble on. That's why I like you. You always do with me as a host, so you let me ramble on. Uh, what's happening right now is, I don't like to, I don't like to insert my opinion or my influence on people. So what's happening right now, and what I want to offer to your listeners once we get to that point, is I'm sharing the Black North commandments with everybody. And I want them okay. to be a filter. And like, okay, this is where this is what I'm talking about. So before you even think about purchasing the book, this is what we're about to get into. And if your listeners, my audience, they can go to my website and they can just download that for free. If there's some symmetry with there, I got a web series coming for for each commandment that kind of goes a little bit more in depth, but in today's language. So that's going to be coming up in two weeks, and then at the end of August, around Labor Day weekend, we're doing the, the big, glitzy, sensational book release, um, and, and looking forward to it. So right now, this is really just sharing the, the Black Wolf Commandments with as many people as possible, and allowing them to make the choice to want to hear more, more of my jitters. That's dope. That's dope, man. Now, let me ask you one more question about the book. When, what was the hardest one? Like, what was the, the hardest point of writing, of writing this? And it was, because I, I know each author is different. So what, what, what was something hard for you? Um, good question. The, I would say this book was the most difficult. There's a license that comes with, like, being an author the same way it comes with, like, making music. Um, I'm, like, I've rapped for, like, five or six years. But I, I was the same guy you're talking to right now. But I would walk in certain rooms and you just a rapper. You got creative license. So, and probably the best example would be if you're a rapper and you call a female out of name and kind of just get swept under the rug because you're a rapper is what you do. Um, and it's the same thing with an author. Where it's like, okay, you got certain licenses with certain things. So what I'm getting at is I don't know if I've ever written as honest a book where I know when the people reading it, they're not going to give me creative license. Like when I'm writing a book, normally there are characters where you can obviously tell that character represents my cousin or that character represents me when I was younger. The people that know me know that. And they give me license to do that depending on the story that I'm telling. But on this book, I wanted to hold myself accountable. Because again, I'm putting this out there as my like coup de grace of my whole life. And then I know my audience, the people that's going to travel with me, like we don't have, my audience doesn't hold punches. So with this kind of being the most honest information, and then what I'm alleging that it does, I'm alleging that the problems, the, some of the issues that we face in our community, A, if you read this book, is going to change how you look at all of that. Mm. To be able to back that up, like I feel the pressure, like I don't feel like a snake oil salesman. I really, really want to do that. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm nervous, like, hey man, did I, did I explain that chapter right? Did I go as in depth or did I talk too much or should that one have just been um, a graph or a graphic to really get the point across because I really want people to get it. Um, so that yeah. made this one like scary, like scary, like, hey man, like my mama gonna read it, my daughter gonna read it, the, the lady I'm dealing with gonna read it, my old high school coach gonna read it. Well, it's like when I was a rapper, like only my guys that was in the hip hop might listen to an album. Yeah. Now it's like, hey, the point of this book is for everybody to read it and not just people that are uninformed. 
Like, I want the tastemakers and the people in politics, the people in finance that understand that we got some issues. I want them to read it, too. Like, I did my research against that type of um, scrutiny. Where it's like, hey, if I'm doing my job, the, the Secretary of Finance for the United States might read my book. And I don't want to come off as some dude trying to start in a cult. I want to come off as somebody who's got legitimate um, concerns about what's happening in the community and offering some solutions. Let me ask you this, and I want, and this is a more deeper question. Do you ever, do you feel like do you have a sense of responsibility being on the forefront of the book? Is there a sense of responsibility that you feel like you have to um, live by? Um, you know, because it's your words and and people may uh, will probably go on your words. Do you ever feel a sense of responsibility? Man, I think that's a dope question. I think it's poignant, and you won't let you won't make me stretch. It's poignant as far as like we see what's happening with Simone Biles right now in the Olympics, where like this young lady made a choice that like, hey, I need to step back from my own uh, being. Um, to answer that question, I don't. I feel a responsibility, but it's a responsibility that I gave myself. Mm. Um, give you a little context to that. I might sound great, but I don't have your typical black man screw ups. You know, uh, I'm a felon. I got. Um, had bad credit, completely financial, illiterate, um, didn't understand the value of a black woman, um, wasn't being the father that I was supposed to be. And I woke up, I'm 30 years old, and I'm in jail. And I'm not like in jail like the constant screw-up guy. I'm 26, 27 years old, making six figures, going in a car dealership. I'm uh, 30 years old in jail, but a year before, months before, I was just asked to come speak at my old grammar school. So it was real, real out of place because I have never deviated in character. Just wasn't putting my energy in the right places. But that was a wake-up call that was personal. So, like, you know, I can get my stuff together and make sure my kids are all right and they're taken care of. But that, those moments made me feel like, I, if I'm aware of this and I'm getting through these things, it's something else I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I'm not on an attention hunt right now. Like, when I look at real estate or when I look at numbers or when I look at the way things are set up, I'm predisposed to be like, oh, you can do that. Well, what if you just move that over here? I'm just naturally that type of person, and now I'm applying that to wealth strategies. And I... I wanted, I wanted that responsibility. I wanted to be like, hey, I need to do something great. I want to pick something that I feel like fits my skill set and also fits the right challenge mm. in life. And I think, I think what, what, what's going to be my best for cutting y'all, I, I think what's going to be great, man, and this is, this is going to be the most out, outstanding feeling in, that you'll probably ever get, that when people do get it and they implement it, in the in the the better for the better and i think that's going to be right now it may be too much because it, it, it hasn't really took off yet but i think you're going to catch that feeling that when you start seeing people okay i i gave them i gave them this and and that's a great feeling man that's kind of like how whenever i dj and they have a good they have a good time you know what i'm saying it's that it's that gratitude feeling man i think you even I think as a business owner, a, per, a business owner has to do their homework. So if you're a DJ, you know if, you, if, if Drake got a number one song, you know when you put that on, even if things weren't going right, it's a way to it'll catch people. And when you DJ and you run in a business and you know that, as a business owner in this yeah. mindset, I know I'm coming with legitimate information that's going to stand this test of time. This won't go out of style next year. But at the same time, it's built like a business. We're like, all right, I'm literally walking into a crowded room and saying, I can show you how to legitimately make money, and I don't get paid until you make that money. When you make that money, 
the best way to leverage that money is to put it into real estate. And, oh, by the way, I'm a real estate broker. I own a real estate brokerage. So a lot of these things, as far as, like, automating the information, the book, any book, any song, it's a commercial. It's a commercial. Where the pressure comes in is, like, I, this ain't a commercial for a big man. This is a commercial for, like, us dying in our community. So I do feel a responsibility towards that. That I put on myself. I'm not responsible for black people, but I put that on me. I, I think I figured something out. I want to apply it this way. Um, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good that can come from for, for everybody. But it was built that way. It was built for me to be able to explain it to you the same way they treat us. Like, my product includes, like, hey, man, if you take advantage of this the right way, it'll answer a lot of your questions. It'll, it'll allow you to do a lot of things that you would like to do. And I'm literally just telling you I'm going to hold your hand while you do it. And it'll be tangent. I'm not telling you to feel better. I'm telling you to go get an LLC and keep up with your bank statements. And if you do that, I'll be able to turn that into money that you can use to create the lifestyle that you want to create. And it's legit. So, um, you, you kind of can hear it. I'm, I'm like, you're sitting in the candy store. Like, I want to get this information out there. I'm kind of looking, again, the goal is to, the goal is to start certain conversations, and, and it's funny how money can change everything. I want to yeah. know where we'll be if 90% of our community is not in survival mode. When we're not worrying about how we're going to eat, how we're going to pay rent, where we're going to see. I want to see how active we are in politics when we got time for it. Mm. Not, not mm-hmm. saying that everybody's going, going to get in line, but like if, if three out of ten get it and we're able to fund them and allow them to achieve what they would like to achieve, what that's going to do from a generational standpoint. And then we let that spread like a disease or a pandemic, but in good nature, good sense, like let's go get it. And let's, let's improve. Uh, uh, more or less, this, um, centering on that, this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity moment. And the product, the book, the services that go with it, they were built this way on purpose. With an understanding that we've been resistant to certain information that was either they kept from us or was put to us in a way where we weren't able to leverage it that we're traditionally consumers instead of producers. It was built that mm. way. Like, when you say what was so difficult about it, like, I mean, I've talked like this since I was a little boy, but, like, I was truly like the guy that wanted to talk like this instead of the guy that could hoop, you know? Where it's like, you know, I spent yeah. a lot of time talking to a lot of different people. They're going to get it when I put it to a this way. And everything about it is on purpose. And and you know what, man? I think I think it the, the needle is moving. People are starting to be more woke, as they say. But I think uh, I, I'm always I've always been the type of guy where I think ahead. Um, I, you know, a lot of these a lot of people go on. Oh well, you know, I, these white these white families have their names from past from generation to generation. But we can do that too. We just got to set it up. Pass it down to 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 your kids, and th- and their kids pass it to their kids, and it goes on and so forth, man. It's uh, and, and that's really what it's all really about at the end of the day is building a legacy. And that part, what you just said right there, is, is kind of where I sit on the responsibility thing, where it's like, I right, we know what's supposed to happen, and for the most part, you know, self included. Um, you are already doing it. It's just a matter of putting it in that box, like, hey, what y'all call passing down information, um, creating a legacy, something that my children can be proud of. Like, I mean, literally, you yourself, you're doing it. Like, look how I found you. Like, you, yeah. find, you find a way to leverage your passions, and wealth ain't in dollars. Wealth in time. What people around you that gloom something off of you, like myself included at this point. Um, yeah. You giving us an example. Or like, hey, man, if I want to, even if it's not with music, if I want to go back to chalk and just go chalk in the front of my house on the sidewalk, nowadays you can leverage that. 
And somebody will see you and be like, hey, how did you do that? And like that, when you wake up one day and it happens one, one person at a time, you wake up one day, probably 20 years ago, all of us was, let's go to college, that's the only way to be successful. Just in 20 years, that college thing is a 50-50 now. Because you can exactly. just go pick up a trade, or you can go get an online business. And you can just go online business can just be your Instagram account nowadays. Exactly. So it's happening. You probably be more responsible than you would ever give yourself credit for because you're too busy walking instead of talking. But it's you. And if you turn on enough people, like you touch people that you don't know you touch. So when you turn on enough people and you start talking like this, you almost probably, there's some little kid in China that listens to your show. There's some little kid in New Amsterdam that you would never think was in your demo listening to your show. And you put it in a language that you understood. And you look up one person at a time. He go to five people or the people that he influenced by. And, like, we're not talking right. about chicken or steak. We're talking about real stuff. And if they choose to let you walk with them on that journey, that's why first thing I said in the email, hey, I appreciate you for having this platform. And that's what I'm looking for you at this point in time because I want to get my message out there that you've already been doing what I think is going to be the most difficult part of my mission, which is why I look to make these right. alliances and I saw somebody like you and, like, you was, it, was, it was like the Deja Chappelle thing. Yeah, it was an aura around it. I like, I know I'm going to be able to connect with this guy. Well, I, I, and I, I look I, at I, things. I write stuff like that. I look at things from from a from a all around perspective, man. Uh, you know, I I, I think, and especially in this in this this light, is that it needs to be talked about because we're not a lot of people, and especially blacks, we don't we don't worry about stuff that, like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I know when Kanye West had made a statement uh, some years back, he was like, "We're all programmed and." And and we're all oh, something about uh, slaves or something. We're all slaves to something. And people got on to him about that. But he's really speaking some truth. We're all slaves to material things. We're all slaves to um, uh, being uh, being. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, being gratitude towards somebody so we want people to, to love us so bad that's i feel like it's the whole reason for instagram two reasons is to, to sell yourself or to sell what you got that's the only two reasons a lot of people on instagram are just selling themselves to for the likes for the the comments and and the the reaction of it but in really and truly we don't really need all that i'm gonna tell you a quick story and it's usually when Race, race isn't touchy for me, but, like, I don't hold no punches when I talk about it. So I try to be sensitive to the rooms that I'm in. And when I want to avoid it, but I still want people to know where I stand, I tell this story. There's this, this white family in suburban America, and they go out and they get a dog. And they bring that dog home, and to their amazement, the dog can talk. It says, hey, how you guys doing? Thanks for picking me up. I think I'm going to like it here. The people are so amazed that this dog can talk that they treat the dog like it's a part of the family. They even get to a point where they let the dog come when they're having dinner and sit at the table with them. Now, one day, something terrible happened. Um, the house caught on fire. The people ran outside, and they can see that the dog was still inside. Now, mind you, the dog can talk. So the dog is yelling out the window, and it says, come get me. We're family. I'm, I'm still in here. Can you guys come save me? Mm -hmm. And the people looked at him, and they said, we would, but you're just a dog. And I say that to say basically everything you just said. We trying to fight for a seat at the table, and we're not wanted at that table, and we keep acting like the only way we're going to eat is if we sit at that table, and we're not. To a point, I think, and again, you know, I'm, I'm a black man, so I'm going to think like this. I think we symbolize like a talking dog. We're unique. We're not just regular. We're, we're able to do things, and we've been able to display, even under adverse conditions, which is what the United States is. They're like, okay, we can perform at a higher level, but we keep seeking approval. We keep wanting to be at a certain table or 
the outrage and the things we want, we went through, we want that to be noticed so badly that I think we're being distracted from the concept that we have to move forward. Um, but I'm not one of those guys that gets on my people. It's a reason that we respond the way we respond, and it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that it's difficult to kind of, you know, I go talk to young kids all the time, you kind of got to beat in their head the concept of financial literacy. That's generation after generation after generation of effort to make, you know, people think like that, to make black people not be concerned with their financial literacy. To put it on the back burner, that's for us to be consumers, for us to get a paycheck and want to go spend it immediately, for us to think taking on investment is risky, for us to feel like putting our money under our mattress makes more sense than putting it in a financial institution. That is not happenstance. That is, those are not old wise tales or, or, or life hacks. So like at a point in time, propaganda was put out there that discouraged us from that, and it happens today. If you know, Sam. you know, you open that red, that that race, that race body and get deep. I'm just, again, I'm, I'm not even kind of like the um, the overarching white people are terrible. Um, I think what's more important is that when we actually actually get our brothers about attacking this issue, I think we've been completely fooling ourselves as far as the magnitude and how deep it goes. I don't think the stuff is physical anymore. I think the things that were perpetrated was psychological warfare, equivalent to the war crimes that people did in World War II. Mm -hmm. it's like, all right, now that wasn't just you were killing people. That was based on an ideological um, way of thinking that's criminal in and of itself. Like, they didn't exist before the 1800s. Like, it's a completely American concept. We just used to be people before then. And, like, they created it, and they created classes with it, and they built the whole country around this, this destruction. And, um, yeah, man, that's, that's not a coincidence. It's built this way. And just to go on a little bit what you were saying earlier um, about, you know, uh, we, we are so yearning a seat at the table um, and let me give you an example on this. And I, and I've been, de you know, I've been doing DJing for, for a while now. Uh, I've done stuff for like GCI, um, guest, guest DJ, Power 92, I, I would guest DJed, but they never would let me into the door. So, and here's the cold part. I had to go outside of Chicago and uh, I, I was working for 93, 93.7 uh, 93 to beat. That's an iHeart station. Mm -hmm. So... I, I was doing the high school tours and they they first they only gave us two schools to go with and so what we did was me and this other dj we built it up and by the end of it we are doing at least three or four different schools we, a week so we got it to the point to where the other the the other biggest station 97.9 is following our formula. So now 93.7's iHeart comes and says, well, thank you, Malone. We can take it from here. Same thing with, uh, in the pandemic, I was, I was in Chicago and I was, uh, doing, uh, uh, 1680 AM at, at another station. I'm giving them ideas. I'm giving them so many ideas. And it's basically, oh, thank you, Malone. We'll take it from here. So thus I started my own station with the with the ideas because i'm giving people i'm building so many things up and it has been proven before i've, I've built up so many different things that either i don't get the credit for or it, it it never pans out on their end and it's like okay well why why give somebody else all the credit or give them the whole the whole keys to the to the car when i can just own my own car I think this, I think everybody connects with uh, whatever they connect with for a reason. And even listening to you talk, I'm gonna put this on your spirit today. Um, I think what you're doing is fantastic. I think the equivalent of the perfect teacher for these times 
it would be somebody like you. If you chose, and again, I, I, I put emphasis on the word chose because I think it's a choice somebody makes, to take on such a responsibility, like myself included for a period of time, and then like a lot of young black males, well, females in this country, like the music game, like understanding that and the lessons, the, what they need to be prepared for and what they need to do, the perspective that you can add in the language that they understand. Because you, you created a platform for me to, to share what I have to say. And really what I'm getting at is that's good, but I think I, I, I would question if your highest use wouldn't be to tell your stories. They would touch so many different people, especially the young people, that because everybody want to get on that way. And, like, the way you would be able to illustrate uh, a lesson about decision-making, but being able to tell that story you just told. Like, I know when I walk in rooms when I'm not getting people. When I'm not right. getting people, the people I usually don't get, you'll get. Well. Now, that story you just told, it's like, even with, like, I just, even when I know it, I get everywhere you went, because I'm like, hey, man, I wanted to do that music thing. I know exactly what it's like. And then, like, what they need to be prepared for, how they're going to treat you in that business. To me, it ain't no closer business to, like, the actual streets than it is, like, the music business or somebody like yourself just to navigate certain things. I put it on your spirit to not only give other people a platform, but make sure you tell me your story too, because you got some nothing to know. And that's right. this was my interview, and you know you <laughs> you gave me nothing. Well, well, I, I, Marcus, I, I I do appreciate you, man. I do appreciate you coming on here. I know we're coming down to the nitty gritty, but and I know we went over a little bit, but it, it, sometimes interviews you need it to, to digest. You get what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, I'm, I've never been the type of guy, oh, yeah, just, you know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes here or, you know, a, a set time because there really is no set time. There, there's a time frame that I would like to go in, but if it's a good conversation, let it let it roll, man. Let it digest because it needs to be heard. And sometimes you can tell, like, <clears throat> I knew this was going to happen. So as we got on the phone, like, I had an intrigue about what it means that you do. And then when we started talking, like, like it's going to turn into a conversation, just kind of based on the way we think and the way we look at things. Where, like, same way you would be talking to me, and, like, you'd be like, I want to ask you this question. Like, when you would be talking or ask the question, I'd be like, hey, that's a good question. And it turns into a good conversation after a while because two people are engaged. We're like, hey, I want to I wanna hear what you have to say, and I want to contribute something to that space. Real. Yeah, man. I, I I honestly believe that. Marcus, uh, where can the people find you? The website, everything. All right. I need everybody, I need all of your listeners to go to the Black Wealth Builder dot org. I need you go to go there today and I need you to download a free copy of the Black Wealth Commandments. And then I need you to go follow me on Instagram and Facebook so I can put you in tune with all of the other amazing things that we provide, as well as let you know that you're left by yourself and introduce you to our community. So again, I need you to go to the blackwealthbuilder.org so you can download your free copy of the Black Wealth Commandments. And I need you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at the Black Wealth Builder so we can start making these changes that we need to make. And there we go, people. Make sure you guys support, support, support. It's the name of the game, man. You know, we, we want to change the narrative. This is how this is how we change the narrative, people. This is how we got to start supporting the, the the people that that are that that are here for us, man, and that I uh, that I do. Marcus, I really do appreciate you uh, being on here and and just talking to me, man. Um, yeah, likewise, likewise. Um, the Mutually beneficial. Like, I think a lot of that. I don't, I don't know if you give yourself enough credit. Like um, for people like myself that are looking for platforms and like you like a sound post, like a light sound wall to, to give people like myself that on the show a place to do it and it's comfortable, it's real. Um, that's all for you, boss. 
That's real, man. But before you go, Marcus, I wanted to ask you this, and I know you're from over east too. So, do you remember the Moo and Oink off of uh, seventy? I think it was seventy second and in, in Stony. Yep, yep. Uh, probably more familiar with the one that was over on the west side off of uh, Cicero and Madison. But yeah, I was. Yeah, more than more than disappear like what early two thousand. Like yeah, they uh, the, they the took that out. away. I think it was when they took that away there, because when I went over, they wasn't there. It was a Dollar Tree. Yeah, they they all closed at the same time. I think it was like the early two, and it was uh, their one day going the next. And there was another. Oh, uh, there was a store out there. Uh, what's that name? The Dominics on Seventy First and Jeff. Yeah, Dominics. <laughs> caught the bullet a long time ago. What's over there now? It's a. Uh, it's it's a whole it's what it's a it's that the Renaissance is still there and that Chinese place is still there. But the uh the Dominics and what was that? The C Cell. I think that's what we would call C Cell. They're gone. All the Dominics are gone. Yeah, man. It, yeah. It, it, it's 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 changed. <laughs> the city's still the same, but like you were you were and stuff happens fast. Like, um, like I got in real estate, like what you might call a lonely and bronze When I got in real estate, it was one of those go buy a vacant lot for a thousand dollars. I got in real estate in 2015. Today, these are four, five hundred thousand dollar homes. Like mm. neighborhoods, I turn them over quick. I do. If you have any idea how much business I do in the city. But now it's a whole thing over there now. It's it's a Starbucks over there now. It's still <laughs> in the world, though, but it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, man. It's not the same anymore, man. Like the where Evergreen Mall used to be, it's they it don't change it up. There's a mod pizza there. There's not even a mall there anymore. No, it's, it's just as much stuff to. And again, it's, I don't know, like Evergreen. That used to be the place to be. And I, it, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, man, it done changed. It done changed, man. But it, 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 you know, I, I don't get me wrong. I love the city. I do. I do. It's just, it's just it's Chicago. Man. I think Chicago is a beast up in and of itself. I think Chicago is one of those you make it you make it anywhere kind of places. Not saying that everywhere else is, is easier. But Chicago presents represent, uh, some unique challenges that are separate from New York, LA, um, and then obviously, you know, places down south to the point where, like, you find your foot in there, I think you're going to do okay. Real. Marcus, I do appreciate you, man. If, if you need anything, just, just give me a call, and, and, and I'm here, man. Uh, I'm going to hold you to that because I'm starting my podcast next month um and like i said same way i was talking to you i'm like hey man i feel like that was a great interview but i kind of feel like people need to hear you like the first 12 guests i got on my show are just people that i've interviewed and i'm like hey no i think people need to hear you just as much as i'm running around trying to make sure they hear me so you won't be hearing from me because i kind of i would i'll be privileged if you let me um let me be a part of you getting your story out there, even if it's just to my audience. Hey, man, I'm cool with anything, man. Just, just, just let me know. Just let me know. Just, just let me know in the study where you made an impression, sir. Uh, happy to know you. Happy to make your acquaintance. Definitely, man. Definitely. Chicago 77.3. We out. One. Turn your speakers up. Hey, man. This is Chicago 77.3. Right now. Get in tune.